Hi guys, our old friend, the House of Commons hooligan Jonathan Gullis, appeared on the Nick Ferrari show ahead of PMQs on Wednesday to talk about asylum seekers. Now this follows the news of the tragic loss of life in the English Channel the night before. Gullis here demonstrated a complete lack of understanding of the European Court of Human Rights and the law in general. He tried, of course, like most far-right figures, to pin the blame on lawyers, not the government. Have a listen to this mess. But what I'm simply trying to do is add to the Prime Minister's suite of options on what we can do to make sure we enact the Rwanda policy as part of the National and Borders Act. And that is simply doing what we did with prisoners' voting rights, which is ignoring the European Court of Human Rights and immediately getting those planes off the ground and over to Rwanda to act as a deterrent to stop people endangering their lives and putting money into the hands of smuggling gangs. But how will you stop what I understand to be many lawyers who would seek to take cases to prevent those, uh, those flights taking place? Well, this is part of the issue, Nick, is at the end of the day that we keep having lawyers uh, putting in place blockages on what is UK legislation from its democratically elected parliament. And this is about parliamentary sovereignty and enacting that sovereignty, uh, partly obviously to take back control of our laws and borders, which is what the people voted for, particularly in somewhere like Stoke-on-Trent, North, Kids, Grove and Talk, where 73 percent voted to leave. But of course, which the Conservative Party won that 80 seat landslide majority on as well. So this is simply saying that we, like other countries across uh, as signatories to the ECHR, have ignored rulings in the past. I think France and Germany around 17, 18 percent of ignorance rate. Uh, so all I'm saying is that we have a democratic elected parliament. We have passed a law through our houses of parliament. We have the right to control our borders and protect our people. And if we want to do and we've done a deal with Rwanda, we should be able to enact it without being held back by foreign judges in foreign courts. <sighs> It's not foreign judges and foreign courts, it's an international court which the UK has a representative on. Okay, this is something obviously ignored, this reality is ignored, this fact is ignored by both politicians and commentators. There is a British judge sitting as part, sitting on the Court of Human Rights in, in Strasbourg. Now, getting rid of the European Convention on Human Rights um, would would cause the UK some problems because it's necessary as part of the Good Friday Agreement. Now, I know Brexiteers don't care about the Good Friday Agreement, but the British government has signed up to that. So would Jonathan Gullis be willing to break the Good Friday Agreement as well? Because there'd be serious consequences if the UK government did that. But this point that it's we're not able to send people away because of the European Convention on Human Rights is a lie. You can deport people. The, the problem was, when it came to Rwanda, was it was British judges that were saying no. And of course, there's always this focus on lawyers, lefty lawyers trying to cause problems at the last minute. It's not the lawyer, it's the law. It's the judge that makes the decision, not the lawyer. Now, I know it's convenient to blame lefty lawyers, but it's the judge that makes the decision at the end of the day. And the judge makes the decision based on the law. Now the government haven't changed the laws. They haven't taken away this power from judges. Why not? Because they continue, and I've said this before, to con they continue to use this as a weapon. They weaponize this issue, asylum seekers. They weaponize the issue of immigration. They need it as a tool against the Labour Party. Now, of course he mentioned Brexit here. Boris Johnson won an 80 seat majority. Then if you're just, let's put our Brexit hat on for a moment. And the question would be, then why haven't you done anything about this in two years? If you needed to leave the EU to take back control, you could, you could actually ask the question since 2016, why haven't you done anything about it? But if you want to say, well, We've, it, we could only do it when we actually left the EU in 2020. Well, two years have passed, almost, and you haven't done anything about it. Why not? And you're sitting <laughs> in the party of government. The question I would throw back at this guy would be, why haven't you done anything about it in two years? You've taken back control. Why haven't you taken back control? Obviously, taking back control is different to what was presented in the past is it has a different meaning to what was presented in the past. Taking back control is just a throwaway slogan. 
doesn't actually mean anything. So ignore international law, maybe in a limited and specific way or in a complete way, I'm not sure. But this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. And he's just using this sort of language, I believe, in order to hold on to his seat at the next election. To whip up hatred against refugees and asylum seekers because he knows those because that's he knows that's what's required in order for him to hold on to his seat. It's disgusting. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.